Hi everyone, I'm uh, Jason Perkoniak. I'm with Google um, in Google Workspace, and I'm here to talk to you about Kotlin multi-platform and our transition to it. Um, if that's not what you want to hear about, this is your last chance to get out of here before they bar the doors, and you're stuck with me unless the fire alarm goes off. Um, OK, so if I'm boring, just throw something at me, or some of my coworkers here are here to keep me honest. Um, otherwise, I'm going to get into it. So I'm going to do a brief overview about what I talked about last year. Um, when I said we were going to experiment with Kotlin multi-platform, and that's kind of why we do multi-platform in workspace and why we're looking at Kotlin. Um, so I'm going to do my last year's presentation in two slides instead of 15 minutes. There was a lot of padding last year. Um, so um, in workspace, we have been doing multi-platform for a long time. Uh, we've been doing it for more than a decade. Um, we use it for things like in Gmail, um, our synchronization layer, if you imagine multiple devices synchronizing the same email chain, working on the same draft email. All of that synchronization code has to work the same way, um, and that's all multi-platform code. Um, similarly in docs, the system with the document model, we are all interacting with your document the same way, that magic. It's all shared code that all works the same way from application to application. Um, and the reason we do this is for consistency. Um, you want feature for feature, bug for bug consistency between all of the platforms, and that's what our users want. Um, over time, you get improvements in velocity if you invest in multi-platform over years, but it really comes down to consistency, and that's why we go there. Um, we target business logic, and we use the term business logic, we use that term really, really vastly, and when Android says they're supporting business logic now in Kotlin multi-platform, what they're talking about is basically everything after the UI. Um, and the reason Workspace thinks about business logic as what we target in our multi-platform use case is that user and that user experience, what the user touches and feels, they want it to feel like the application experience they, they have particularly for productivity apps, right? They want the touch, the feel, the scroll bounce to be the world they live in. Um, and so that's why we target business logic. Um, so we've been using our own system based on Java to Objective-C, J to Objective-C, Java to Clojure, Java to Kotlin, J J Jackal, which is uh, our JavaScript system um, for a decade. And the principle of that system matches the Kotlin multi-platform system in that you deeply embed the objects in the native platform so that you can access the objects in a logical way. Um, and so our plan is we've built several transpilers. Let's build another one. Uh, you know, everything's a, you've got a hammer, everything's a nail. So we're translating Kotlin, Java to Kotlin on the fly so our developers are still writing Java but we're using the Kotlin compiler. And this does a couple things for us. It lets us build out and vet the Kotlin runtime, the Kotlin compiler, with our really large-scale apps simultaneously as kind of time moves on. Um, and that, that was our plan. That was our experiment. That's what we were going to execute on. And so where are we now? Where have we gotten to? And so what I can talk about is we're actu we've actually decided to transition to Kotlin multi-platform, starting with Google Docs, which is in the process of launching and rolling out right now on Kotlin multi-platform. And we started with Google Docs because it's a very heavily, um, not just tested, but um, annotated um, code base. So we have metrics for build performance, um, latency, memory usage, very, very carefully annotated for Google Docs. And so we can actually see those metrics and provide feedback to the Kotlin um, compiler team, the Kotlin runtime team, and like make iterative improvements on that ecosystem and use that as judgment for kind of moving forward and expanding. And so we're, go we're going to, like, we've reached the point where we're kind of at parity and we can continue gathering statistics and making iterative improvements. So I'm going to share kind of some of the active work we're doing. And I'm going to focus 
mostly on Kotlin native because that's my area of focus when I talk about these details. Um, so when we talk about build performance, um, at Google we use um, a system like Basil, so it's a little bit different than a lot of what a lot of other people use in Gradle. You can think of most of our builds kind of look more like your clean builds. Um, so there's a header system and some Caleb caches we've worked on. We've all, we're also working with the um, JetBrains to update LLVM. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, for runtime latency, um, the Kotlin compiler team started working on GC changes in Kotlin native for us because they knew even before we were giving them statistics that that would be critically important for us. Um, as they did that, they changed some of the GC heuristics, and as we began seeing our latency numbers, they, we found places where they needed to gather more heuristics, and so they're in the process of making those changes now while we've got workarounds in process, and we're hoping to pull out those workarounds as they make those improvements in the actual like, Kotlin native runtime. Um, again, um, in the interop layer, we have found performance issues around strings um, in particular, and we have worked around them again for our current release, but we're in the process of designing out changes to the interop layer to help with this. You're seeing a theme here of we, we need to kind of, we can identify these problems, work around them, but then we also want long-term fixes as we roll out to our entire platform. Um, runtime. Um, I, I'm going to tell you my favorite runtime story, which is um, iOS 15 to iOS 16. Um, we discovered a huge memory discrepancy between the memory usage in iOS 15 versus iOS 16, and it was, it has to do with the way it counts dirty pages in the constant pool. And it's a security issue that the constant pool gets remapped um, to protect users. And that remapping causes the constant pool to be marked dirty. That normally doesn't matter for most normal iOS apps, but the entire set of V tables for Kotlin native is in the constant pool. And that was megabytes for us of dirty pages affecting our RAM usage iOS 16, they've changed the loader such that it now dynamically does that, and so it was this huge difference, and we had to tweedle out why, why, is, this different? why is this different, and so we've been bit-picking apart like, all of the differences in the Kotlin compiler and where these memory usages, do we care about this, don't we care about this, and we've been working through this. And the last item I want to show you is um, we built out a heat, heap dump tool for Kotlin native. Um, it generates um, HPROF files, so the Java heap dump uh, uh, statistics system, so that you can put it into, say, IntelliJ and use the standard heap dumping tool set you're used to for Java to look at heap dumps from Kotlin native um, as we profiled the heaps of our application. This is just a random test application and a picture of that. Um, so we are in the process of getting the underlying infrastructure for that upstreamed into the runtime right now. Um, the bits and pieces to make that easy to use. Um, we haven't figured out plans on who's going to build that or make that available, but the actual infrastructure to actually do the heap dump is getting open source, so we're excited about that. Um, I want to tell you a story about kind of deep diving into like one of the things we investigated, just to give you a flavor of like the different things we do, we've done to get to this point. And we're hoping to kind of continue to do as like workspaces in this partnership of helping evolve Kotlin multi-platform um, with like our partnership with Android and JetBrains. Um, so we um, bring in the development branch of Kotlin Native and we build against that. And we noticed our build times jumped by about 10 minutes on average for one of the build steps. And that's like a huge problem for us in our build cluster. And no one was quite sure why the build releases are cut every two weeks, and no one could pick out a CL that could do that. So what do you do? You begin running and bisecting the build, the build tool. And so this is like um, actual check-ins on the um, Git repository for Kotlin native. And we identified the CL that caused the problem. And it didn't make sense until you read the CL description and you realized we can't roll this back because it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. So what, this, what the change that caused the build regression was, was we updated Kotlin Native's 
bit code generation for LLVM, well, not we, but the, the, the compiler team had updated the bit code generation for Kotlin native to make it so that the bit code was easier to optimize for the LLVM so that we could get faster, smaller binaries. Excellent, but optimization takes time. So those 10 minutes were actually well spent optimizing the application. It's just, I want my, we wanted our 10 minutes back. But you can't roll it back. So time to profile LLVM. Um, and it all comes down to one pass in LLVM. OK. So now you look, and what can we do with one slow pass? Well, LLVM had already fixed our problem. All we have to do is update LLVM in Kotlin Native. That can't be hard. Um, so, OK, the first step was take the patch from somewhere far in the future, patch it into the current version of LLVM Kotlin Native was using, see if it actually solved the problem. Not only did it solve the 10 minutes, it took that particular build step from 30 minutes to 8 minutes. So it was great. Um, but that would have left us with like an odd Frankenstein LLVM. We do not want that. Um, so we, wa we worked to kind we worked to try and figure out, well, Kotlin Native is well behind mainline. And in fact, it's the version that LLVM was at kind of when Kotlin Native was originally made. Um, and the reason for that is um, LLVM and the JVM fight over the signal handlers. Um, and so they don't actually work well together. And so there's a lot of details that have to happen to make them happy in the same binary. And it's hard to do. Um, also, LLVM has, of course, changed its API for actually generating bit code between when, we, when Kotlin Native was first written and now. And so there's a major rewrite in all of the code gen to make this work. That said, because we could kind of show, demonstrate how important this was just for build speed beyond all of the other benefits from using Kotlin Native, and we actually had numerical data to back this up with our application, we could help our Kotlin Native compiler team and the JetBrains team prioritize this on their stack and, make, and put together the work. And so that we could gain this fix, the zillions of other fixes in LLVM between now and then. And so this is planned for kind of just after K2. So it should be coming out reasonably soon. For some reason, they didn't want to change the entire front end and the entire back end generation all at the same time. I don't know. They like making things stable. Um, so where are we going from here? So like I said, Docs is currently in the process of rolling out to real users using Kotlin multi-platform right now. Um, and we're really excited about that. We're going to ga continue gathering statistics and comparing that to our older multi-platform model and sending feedback to our Kotlin compiler team, the JetBrains team. We are going to continue that process across Google Workspace and the Google Workspace apps. Um, the, we are then going to transition to the Kotlin code and standardizing code. Yeah, standardizing code because we're really looking forward to the actual kind of peer point where we're on really Kotlin code and sharing Kotlin code and kind of this enabling, the simplification and enabling us to better share code because like the sharing code, the simplification is like one of Workspace's goals because it will kind of help us enable working forward to building like features in our giant Workspace AI transition. Um, so that's kind of what I've got. I think I have like a minute left if some people want to shout questions at me. Otherwise, I can do a song and dance. Oh, yeah, go, go, shout. An LLM. Um, I just blurring Wasm. Is this something that like, is difficult to make work with um, native and JVM? It, 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 it's a problem with like the JNI in the Kotlin compiler as opposed to like an incompatibility. And it's, Hard. We've actually got like a 
LLVM team at Google as well, and they're kind of talking about how to fix it, but the feature set that's causing the incompatibility is actually like a safety feature in LLVM, so they have to think about how they want to kind of turn it off to make everyone happy. It, it, so everyone wants to work to make it work, it's just figuring out the right way to do it for everyone. Yeah, I think that I think that's time. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.